Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Carr and in this presentation I will be discussing the theory of collective action. Collective action is characterized by a group of people who come together to accomplish a shared goal. By nature, this action works to disrupt social order in favor of fostering upward mobility for that group. Manker Olson Jr. was the first to coin collective action in his book, The Logic of Collective Action. Situated in political science and economics, his book defines several different kinds of groups, the issues they face, as well as incentives for participation. Concludingly, this definition posits that the common interests of a particular group will struggle to supersede the interests of individuals in that group. This is called collective action problem. Scholars have since adapted the basis of his theory to a variety of disciplines, such as sociology, social psychology, anthropology, and communication. Today, collective action is most recognizable in the form of organized petition, strike, or protest enacted by a disadvantaged group of people who seek to improve their circumstances. More recent examples of this include the Arab Spring, Me Too, and Black Lives Matter movements. Collective action is the response by a group and their allies to inequitable and often oppressive experiences, in which joining as one to demand change is seen as the most viable mechanism for course of action. Much of the existing research on how we see collective action operating today is situated in the social identity theory. According to Zomarin et al., the degree to which group members perceive their disadvantage as group-based and unfair predicts the likelihood of collective action. While identification with a group typically always represents participants in collective action, scholars have found that the extent to which groups face injustice and several other factors affect mobilization. Unjust conditions imparted on a group are a leading factor in collective action. When these conditions foster emotions such as anger, anxiety, or indignation, collective action is warranted. We see collective action come to life when these groups and their allies join together as a tool for coping. Other motivational factors include perception that group actions can bring about change, when group members know that other members feel similarly, and when group members know that other members might also participate. Here we come back to a version of Olson's collective action problem. The following issues arise within groups and between members that ultimately rest on the interests of individuals within that group. They are lack of sympathy for the movement, not having been the target of mobilization attempts, not being motivated to participate, presence of barriers, or a combination of the four. Barriers can range from timing or location inconvenience to degree or potential backlash or risks depending on the type of demonstration. There are an infinite number of variables that can affect one's willingness to participate, but the more motivated an individual is, the more barriers they are likely to overcome. When motivation is high and groups channel their emotions into action, they mobilize. Due to advancements in technology, this can be virtually or physically in real time. Either way, through this process, they disrupt norms, the status quo, and seek to change their futures for the better. Together as one, they have the power to not only start conversation, but hold others accountable for behaviors or structures that fail to prove to be safe, just, or equitable to all. Existing knowledge of the theory addresses only structural and cognitive factors of motivation. It is difficult to conclude anything more than predictions for why people engage in collective action. Thus, more research must be conducted on the predictive power as well as in-group conflicts that often arise. And finally, it is important to note that any disadvantaged group can organize collective action. This can happen at your child's school, in your office, in your government, and in communities of all types around the world. This is why it is critical to lead with empathy, open ears, and willingness to change in order to conceive a world that we all feel welcome and valued in. Thank you for taking time to listen to my presentation on collective action. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and constructive criticism. Goodbye!